good afternoon uh once again welcome to the second session of profile building fair uh we have himangi kanoi with us and she would be talking about building your design or art or music portfolio in this session she would help you design your portfolio for your college applications before we begin with the session let me give you a brief of himangi Kimangi Kanoi she is currently a student at Rhode Island School of Design and is an experimental artist designer and creative education enthusiast she is collaborating with seven different talented artists designers and architects and she started up uh, an organization profolio a gateway to find the secret to decoding design applications Profolio is a team of creative enthusiasts hustling to uplift and build art, design, and architecture portfolios. She has teamed up with seven creative mentors from the best art and design universities across the world. The diversity in her team allows students to network expansively. They get first-hand feedback about different art majors and an insight into how education in different countries varies from one another. Her mission is to give students what we would have hoped for when we were building our portfolios. So she says that her mission is that uh, students uh, get the maximum, or students will be able to build the portfolios like how they would have imagined or what they had really hoped for. Uh, before we begin the session, we have a few reminders. That is, uh, this session and the upcoming sessions will be recorded and it will be uploaded on YouTube as a part of the profile building playlist. and there will be a live q and a session towards the end of the webinar with himangi you can share all your doubts and queries on the chat box regarding design art music portfolios how you can build it how can you make it attractive for your college applications so welcome himangi to next genius webinars it's a first time how do you feel thank you so much for having me here and good evening everyone that was a really beautiful introduction helen thank you so much and um before i start off i have to mention that my interaction with helen devish and neeraj so has been absolutely inspiring it's the wonderful people to work with for those of you who need help with your applications okay so a lot of you might be wondering what is a college student doing here amongst counselors and a panel of uh, professionals who've been in the industry for about 20 30 years so i'll just break that up for you all of us on the team applied to art and design colleges or an architecture course at least 3 to 4 years ago and we built our own portfolios from scratch and unfortunately we barely got any assistance on how to go about our work you all must be knowing and made aware of multiple counselors who help you with your test prep sat college list essays but do you really find someone who can help you with your artwork foundationally and when you're an art and design student or an architecture student the portfolio is the key to acquiring an admission it's okay if you have average school grades or an average essay but you cannot afford to have an average portfolio if you're looking to get into a design school so i just like to walk you through some simple steps and show you how you can approach the process and make it easier for yourself okay so starting off with the most basic thing what is a portfolio really yes it is a collection of your artwork over the past 2 3 years yes it is a medium to depict your skill your um concepts the kind of work you do it shows like about 15 to 20 pieces you've done over the past few years but it's not just that it's also an insight to yourself who are you really what kind of a person are you what are your passions what are your hobbies not only your positives but what are your fears anxieties you need to highlight different aspects of yourself through your portfolio and let me compare this to proudly writing an essay so when you write your common app essay or a descriptive essay about yourself you don't start thinking about general topics right you start thinking about yourself and that's exactly what you need to do for your portfolio work instead of thinking of a generic theme you start thinking about yourself and that brings up themes which you are personally passionate about and that's how we can come up with strong concepts for your portfolio which not only depict generic concepts but also themes which you are personally passionate about 
So this isn't about generally talking about who you are as an artist or designer, but who are you personally? And that's what we should aim to sort of bring out through our portfolio. Now, one very key part about the portfolio is process and research, which is often left behind and forgotten. So we just want to create this hyper-realistic, perfect artwork and put it up in our portfolio. But that's not really what shows where you're coming from or what your ideas are. You need to show and depict the whole process you are going through in order to create your work. Start off with simple steps. Like when we were kids in school, we started off with simple mind maps. That's where we walk back to for the portfolio. Simple mind maps, simple sketches, simple brainstorming activities in order to expand the concept you're trying to think about. And that's the foundation of your artwork. And colleges actually want to see this. They don't just want to see, oh, this one final artwork, but they want to see the very beginning, your inspiration. Are you inspired by nature? Are you inspired by people around you? Are you inspired by different movies or different artists? bring that into your work and actually portray that. And when you give admission officers or even a generic audience this process, it actually shows them where you're coming from and how your ideas and concepts have built over time. Another question I often get asked is, can I include an artist study in my portfolio? Yes, you definitely can include an artist representation in your portfolio, but what you can't do is include an artist copy. You shouldn't go and try and copy the Mona Lisa perfectly and think, oh, wow, I've copied the Mona Lisa. I'm the best artist now. That doesn't work. You need to look at an artwork, get inspired by it, and create your own version of it then. How are you inspired by it? What do you see when you look at the artwork? All of us are creatives, right? So when we look at an artwork, we have our own views, we have our own ideas about the piece. So how are you picking up on your viewpoints and your ideas of the project and putting it forward? That's what you want to highlight when you're looking at an artist's research work. It's amazing to have one, but you need to create your own version. Now, the reason why I'm showing you this piece on the screen is it's one of the most common Indian French artists. I'm sure you'll recognize it, Raza. This work is represented by Raza's style of work, but it's not an exact copy. It combines the heritage of the artist and it also combines the student's interpretation of the work. And that's something which all of you should keep in mind while you are putting forward an artist research project. I spoke about this right before, but even when you're showing an artist research, it shouldn't be put up just like this. Show your research, show your um, inspiration, where it's stemming from. Why are you inspired by the artist? What are the points that you're trying to pick up and what is it that you're trying to change? All that research should come in. You can put in rough um, sketchbook pages where you're just doing like journaling your research. You can put it up as mood boards. You can put it up as infographics, but show it. It's an important part of it. We will look at some research examples as well, but this is not how you should represent it. You should also put in your research. More than your final product, your process on how you're reaching there is important. It shows your personal journey on how you're reaching the artwork. Okay. I'm going to show you two quick examples of projects and I want to walk you through this in a little bit of details. I'm going to take a couple of minutes for that. So if you don't know, if you apply to the Rhode Island School of Design or Parsons, the new school, you will have to do a design challenge, an art and design challenge. So this is back from my portfolio when I applied and the topic given to me was Forge. I want to walk you through how I approached the project. So I started off by just simply Googling the word Forge. And I got three meanings. The first meaning of forge is simple, forging a document or duplicating a signature. The second meaning was forging a metal, which means beating it up in a metal furnace or a fire furnace. And the third meaning was something going from its lesser or smaller self to a greater self. 
So I was thinking about myself, as I told you in the beginning, you must think about yourself. I was thinking about myself and I realized that I don't idolize anyone. I don't have one specific inspiration. I'm inspired by multiple people and their qualities. So I took seven such people around me and I drew down their names and I had seven different qualities of them which inspire me. Then I took metal wires and I sort of forged their signatures with the wire. I duplicated their signatures using metal wire. And then I horizontally placed it. So it just looks like an overwhelmed structure of wire when you look at the sculpture at first. But then when you look down, there's a mirror placed on the floor which reflects a face on top of it. So you can see there's a face sculpture which is not visible directly. But if you look down at the mirror, you can see the sculpture through the reflection of the mirror. So that's the objective of this piece, bringing about my personal quality using a topic given to me. And what I want you all to mainly notice is this small sketch on the top right hand corner. It doesn't have to be neat. It doesn't have to be descriptive. It just has to show how your ideas and process develop in order to reach your final piece. It doesn't have to be perfect drawings and it's totally okay if you don't know how to draw, don't worry about that at all. There's another quick sample I want to walk you through, which is from my portfolio. So back in school, I was extremely inspired by fashion and architecture. And I'm gonna walk through the other slide first. If you look at this small sketch on the top left-hand corner, it's a sketch of the Pompidou Center. The Pompidou Center is a museum in France, which is made by an architect called Renzo Piano. And he's a very interesting architect for those of you interested in architecture. So what he does is with his buildings, he takes all these ugly, chunky pipes and staircases and metal rods. And instead of hiding it between the walls, like normal architects, he throws them on the outside of the buildings and he paints them in bold, bright colors like red and green and blue. And that's what I was inspired by. I did a similar thing to the human body. So I threw out the human organs, the stomach, you can see here, the veins, arteries, the intestines, the heart. I took representations of them and I put them outside of the body and I created a fashion garment based on that. And my objective here is to highlight inner beauty and how um, rather than adorning ourselves with fashion in the sense of prints and bright colors and stylish clothes, inner beauty and confidence is something which plays the maximum role in how we carry ourselves. So yes, I want to show you these two examples and I want you to notice small things. A, how can you highlight topics about yourself and what you're passionate about? B, how can you show your process, your research, where did you start from? So I'm just gonna quickly talk about the process work here. It started off with an architecture building. It took some mechanical parts from it and then it looks like this mechanical robotic human being. Then my garment turned into somewhat like a Halloween costume, which looked really odd. And then it turned out to this final garment, which you see constructed in its final version. <laughs> so my idea here is be exciting with your work. You don't want the admission officer to see the same thing over and over again. And this happens very often. Portfolios land up being very similar, especially with observational study. What we try to do is take like a simple fruit or a fruit bowl or books or a plant or a landscape and try to make a study out of it. And that becomes a final art piece. Oh, wow, we made this exactly like the photograph. We are an amazing artist. But no, if you look at the most greatest artists, Jackson Pollock, um, Picasso, they don't have realistic artwork. Their artwork is probably the ugliest. I'm sorry to say that, but it just doesn't look pretty to look at. But that's the point. They are true to themselves. They are expressing their real selves. And that's what you need to do with your portfolio. You need to, your goal should be to stand out instead of trying to make similar artwork to what everyone else does. So this goal is kind of risky. Yes, it is a risk to make unconventional art. It is a risk to not make art, which is generally seen as hyper-realistic, very good skilled art. It is risky. But that's exactly what they want you to see. They want to see you take risks. They want to see you experiment. They want to see you work with crazy materials which are not even available at an art store at all. And this is exactly what will set you apart from all the other applications and all the other portfolios. Putting it simply in one 
five word line you are what you are for your portfolio your idea should be you have 15 to 20 stories to tell about yourself what stories do you want to highlight just simply picking up a fruit bowl isn't saying anything about yourself unless and until you really are crazy and obsessed with fruits and that's what you want to highlight please go ahead but other than that why a simple fruit bowl why a simple portrait i mean what is that showing about you why would you randomly make um selena gomez's portrait and put it into your portfolio is she a specific idol to you definitely if she is go ahead and do it but if she's not then please please avoid doing that the best way for me to give you all some insights is to show you different pieces. So I'm just going to show you a few more artworks. This is an art piece made using no paints, no brush, but simply using cello tape. So if the light has been turned off, it would look like a plain brown flat image. But this is made using brown packing tape and yellow light. So this area has one layer of cello tape. These areas have two or three layers of cello tape, and here there are like eight to ten layers of cello tape. And this part in the center is red tape. So basically, layering of cello tape has made this simple artwork. It isn't paint, brush, watercolor, anything which you conventionally see in an art store. Okay. So the next piece is basically, for those of you who visited Kolkata, it's a landscape of the city Kolkata. It's a cultural reference of someone. And it's made on fan blades. It's not painted on a canvas or paper, but it's enamel oil paints done on fan blades. So my point being, find objects around you to create art. Don't try to just create a breadth of mediums. A lot of people say that we want diversity and different mediums in your art portfolios. But instead of focusing on getting different mediums, focus on getting different experiments and different materials. As an experiment with what you have around you, which personally links up to you, which you use on a daily basis. Instead of focusing on getting one 3D piece, one watercolor piece, one pen and ink piece, that's not your objective. Your objective is having different directives of experiments, not different materials. Intertwine your cultural references. Who are you? Where do you come from? What are your passions? That brings me to this piece. So this is actually a student work project from the last year itself. This student wanted to apply for a furniture and interior design program. And she came to me with this piece, this square in the center. And she said, Himangi, I made this piece. This was my first painting I ever made. And I just went wild. I experimented with random bold colors. And I just played with random stickers and cello tape. I love this piece, but it's not strong enough to go into my portfolio. What we did was we picked up colors and elements from it. We picked up these shapes and we converted it into a multifunctional furniture piece for different children. So her childhood connection to art, her personal connection to the topics converted to her future like sense of what she wants to pick up in the field. This is by another student who loves mushrooms, something as simple as that. We took two or three different kinds of mushrooms, so small, just amongst fit into your hand, and we converted it into an observational study. And you won't believe it, this artwork is five feet big. It's as big as the student. And we made a blown up charcoal study of one or two small, simple, different types of mushrooms. So um, thank you so much. I'm going to stop talking because I want to give you some time to ask questions, but I want to quickly show you one video which sort of symbolizes what we do. It's just a quick overview. Don't draw really passionately, creativity, 
your personality no one's asking for malak thank you uh, just thank one you. thing i have put in a google forms uh, link on the chat please for those of you um, who can fill in that form it will be thank you thank you so much humange it was a really interesting session we have a few questions so the question is could you if you have any programs as such or you just uh, help the students in a direct way if they want to make a portfolio and how do you help them especially when all the classes and sessions are online how do you do this online okay so any class we've taken up to date is online that's not for uh, the student to worry about we will help you online itself in an effective manner we talk to you about concepts brainstorming how to build your ideas once you're ready with that we move on to the materials how can you use interesting and unconventional materials to create your art post that you start building your artwork how to go about it how to make sure your skill is maintained all of that then how to present your artwork it's it's a journey and we'll go about that that's not something to worry about how we help you there are two ways in which we help students one is through summer workshops which are summer portfolio building boot camps and another way is we work with some students one on one for their entire portfolio from when they start working to when on they apply to college right uh, we have another question this is Uh, a student wants to create a fashion portfolio so can you give some tips to the person okay so if you are applying at the undergraduate level you don't need to make a very major specific portfolio it should be a culmination of experiments fine art graphic work fashion you can focus on fashion and some simple tips would be don't conventionally stick to what is fashion illustration or create a gum that you will anyway be doing in college experiment do something different with fashion what about fashion interests you is it sustainable fashion make an artwork centered around that create fashion pieces using random objects around you don't have to use a tailoring machine and cloth use use random chopsticks or random spoons to create a fashion garment but um what i definitely tell you is experiment right we have another question uh, it's not a question but uh, students just want to see your website and the types of works you have done in the past if there's some sort of reference that they can get a uh, link to your yes. website and the contact details also yes we recently launched our instagram page i'm putting that into the um, chat below and i'm also putting in the mobile number which you all can be reaching us on on the chat below itself thank you himangi so you can reach out to her through her instagram page that is at profolio.co and the email and, yeah and she has also shared her e shared her email id on the chat okay moving on to the next question which is do you also train students on a long term basis to train them in art or identify their passion to this identify their skill sets yeah so uh, we are sales our students we do not work with um, hundreds of students we only work with a select number of students we go through a small interview process and we help them from starting to end they work with our entire team in different design fields and they get to know their passions in the separate fields accordingly and then we start with some skill building portfolio building activities we work on the whole portfolio from scratch to end right thank you now the next question is a little interesting one the student wants to know if the person is not good at art or drawing but has a passion or something to press in what can he or she do okay i just have one question for you i know you can't answer me but think about it do you think that jackson pollock picasso were good artists look at their work google it if you haven't seen it before and answer yourself you don't have to be a good artist or designer see we want born geniuses right art and design isn't an inborn talent as many feel but it's a lot based on practice if you practice drawing and if you practice painting you will become good at it if you've never done it before don't expect your first art work to be good and how do you take it ahead i think the examples i showed you were less about mm -hmm. skill but more about taking risks and experimenting and that's what you need to focus on take risks and experiment with your creativity 
don't focus on skill that's something you're going to college to learn that's something which will be taught to you Himangi, when should students ideally start working on their profiles and how is it going to benefit their college applications? Okay, so um, there are two things when it comes to college applications. A portfolio can either be a supplement or it can be a requirement. If you're applying directly to an art design or architecture program, the portfolio will be a requirement. And then it's actually the key of your application. Like I have uh, people in my school, in my college, who are not very good academically, they score pretty less, but they are in the best colleges because their portfolios are outstanding. So it's the key of your application if you're applying as a requirement. Otherwise, as a supplement, it uplifts any application, be it a business, be it an engineering application, anything, liberal arts. Um, when should you start? Honestly, as early as possible. If you can start in grade eight, grade nine, grade 10, that's going to be actually a big win for you. But it's never too late. Like if you're in grade 12, when you suddenly realize that, oh, my passion is art and design, it's never too late. Dive into it regardless. Thank you, Himangi. Uh, can you give some tips to students on how they can create their music and theater portfolio? Okay, so I don't specialize in music portfolios, so I would not like to speak on that too much. But um, yeah. focusing on the creative portfolio bit, um, definitely, this is what I have to say. Okay, so we'll take up the last question because we're running short of time. What if you have some great ideas in your mind, but you're really great at executing it? How are you going to help them then? Okay. Yes, that is a very, very big problem with most people. And the biggest problem to back up this problem is that we expect a lot from ourselves. We expect that the first time we execute the piece, it turns out to be perfectly. The challenge here is how many times are you willing to try instead of just making it once, it not turning out good and you giving up. How much are you willing to put yourself out again and try a completely different route? If you're very creative, don't lose on the idea if you can't get it right in the first go. Try it three times, four times, five times, and you will get there. When you write an essay, your first draft isn't perfect, right? You make at least four, five, six drafts. Similarly for artwork, don't expect to have your first trial perfect. Keep working on it. Keep thinking about creative ways to execute it, and you will get there. The main thing is practicing and not losing hope. Thank you. Thank you so much, Himangi. Uh, one last question, which is, how much time did you, did you spend on one topic in your portfolio? Okay. So that's actually a question which is very, very uh, difficult to answer because there's no definitive answer to it, right? I had portfolio pieces which I finished even as quick as four days. And I also had portfolio pieces which went on for like one or two months. So it totally depends on the kind of execution you pick up. And I feel that all your pieces will be varied. It's not that all pieces will take three days. So you divide 15 pieces into three, 45 days. No, you can't do that. Some pieces will even take you two months just for one piece because that's how expansively you want to make it. And some pieces are just going to be really quick and you can just cover it in like three, four days. Thank you so much, Himangi. Himangi, it would be great if you could, uh, there are a few more sessions coming on the Q&A feature, so you can uh, stay muted and you can answer a few of them if you're willing to. Definitely. Uh, because it's time for the next session for us to begin. Sure. Thank you so much for taking up these many questions and sharing a lot about how to create a portfolio that in a very interesting way. Any final piece of advice or comments you want to share with our students? My final piece to all of you will be something I've been reiterating since the beginning. Let loose. Don't try to please someone else with your portfolio. You have to be yourself. Please just bring out whatever is best or worst within yourself. Don't just show your positives, but also what you're fearful of, what your anxieties are, bring out who you are. And that's about it. I am going to hang around for a while and answer some questions in the chat. And please excuse me if I can't answer all. I've left you my email ID and you do have the Instagram handle. You can always reach out and someone on the team will help you out. Thank it's you. Thank fine, you so thank, thank you so much. for, And we are, it was a really great experience having you with us. 
Yeah, uh, guys, it's been an honor to be here. Thank you. Have a good day, everyone. Bye. Thank you. Bye.